All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're gonna be printing with a filament type that I've never printed with before. Our good friends over at eSun sent me two brand new rolls of filament of ABS high temperature and ABS glass fiber. <clears throat> now I've printed a ton of carbon fiber filaments, but I've never printed a glass fiber filament. So I couldn't be more excited today to try out a new filament type and see how the bamboo printer handles it. So in today's video, we'll go over all of the um, specs and all of the sheets and what you might want to print with ABS high temperature. And then we'll take a look at the ABS glass fiber and what you might print with that and some of the use cases for that. The last filament, uh, Tuning that I did was in Orca Slicer, so this time we'll use Studio or Bamboo Studio to tune or calibrate both of the filaments and see how they do with that. And then we'll print out a Benchy in one of our samples and see how everything goes. So, if all that sounds good, then sit back and relax and I'll get everything ready. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at eSun's website and we'll start with the ABS high temperature. And this is ABS that's been modified um, to strengthen its temperature resistance and heat distortion and temperatures up to 100 C or more. It also inherits all of the you know toughness and impact resistance that you get with ABS with the added benefit of the higher temperature. Some of the parameter information to take a look at is the heat distortion. Um, you know, very, very uh, high temperatures that this can um, handle. So this would be good for like a filament uh, cover spool. If you're going to do drying or something in your X1C or something, this would be a good material to print that out of. And also, if you are printing your own filament spools, this would also be another great material to print that out of since it does have a heat resistance in case you need to dry that filament roll. Um, so that's one application that this would be very, very good for, in my opinion. A couple other things to look at. It does need drying, and it does um, say heated bed require. It does give a suggestion for printing here that the material has a large shrinkage, shrinkage rate, which is common with ABS and ASA. and something to think of, and that's why um, in most of the tips and tricks for ABS and in the tips and tricks that I've given with ABS um, before, uh, an enclosed printer is definitely um, recommended. Now, there are printers out there that say that they will print with this, and um, they probably will. Uh, smaller parts are probably just fine, but anything larger, um, even with the enclosed printers, you still get some warpage or shrinkage um, in there. Um, so they do um, highly recommend uh, using an enclosed printer um, when printing with this ABS. And I found the same to be true, that um, you get less warping, not eliminate warping, but less warping with an enclosed printer than you do with an open printer. So now let's take a look at the glass fiber ABS. And then here it says adding glass fiber reinforced material um, and modifying the ABS strengthens the rigidity and toughness of the A ABS, which has excellent impact resistance and chemical corrosion resistance. It also has good performance in some scenes where high strength requirements such as work jigs and fixtures. Um, so it's really cool that chemical corrosion resistance is brought up in there. So that's something that we haven't seen in any of the filaments um, that I reviewed up to now. Um, so that's pretty interesting as well. Uh, some of the applications, aerospace, automotive, industrial applications, it features high strength, a matte uh, appearance, and a carbon fiber frosted texture. Excellent printability, which we'll see, and we'll see if it can do high um, speed, um, like it says. Um, but this is the first glass fiber uh, filament that I've uh, printed with, and I'm excited to see um, just what it prints like and if it's, uh, you know, excellent printability, like it says. 
So we'll look at the notes and again, we'll see shrinkage is large. Um, so include uh, an enclosed box, the parameter information. We'll see the heat distortion is not as high as the other one. Um, and it doesn't say that it needs drying on here. So I did not uh, dry this uh, roll of filament. So we'll see if that has an effect. Um, the high temperature one said it did need uh, drying. So I did dry that one with my e-box light. And then here again, it's adding another note about uh, shrinkage and it's saying with the glass fiber cooling is a little worse. Printing can be appropriate to open a little fan to improve the printing effect or reduce the model of the over, of the overhang angle structure. Um, so we'll have to deal with a little bit of translation there. Um, so when it's cooling, it can be a little bit worse. Um, so it's saying to use, um, uh, right, in our Bamboo X1C, we have a part cooling fan. That's what it's talking about here, use that fan. Um, to help um, do that and to reduce the overhang angle of your structures uh, to, or to reduce the speed of the print. So a couple of tips and tricks that they're giving um, right here as well. So we'll keep everything in mind with that. And I'm super excited to print with this. So let's go ahead and jump into studio now. And we'll go ahead and get started with calibrating these two rolls of filament. All right, so here we are in Bamboo Studio, and we'll go ahead and uh, get this filament calibrated. You'll see I have it loaded in the first slot right here. And we'll be using the auto calibration today, um, and we'll use the high temp plate or the smooth PEI plate for this. If you wanted to do the uh, textured plate, you could do the manual calibration, which is right up here or you can go into Orca Slicer and do this manual calibration right up here. Um, it's the same calibration um, and everything there. Um, so we're gonna use the automated uh, calibration today. So we'll go into the calibration tab here and go to the flow dynamics calibration and hit auto calibrate. We're gonna calibrate with the 0.4 nozzle. We're also using the high temperature plate and we're gonna use this generic ABS right here. And we will change the name of this um, here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and get the high temp calibrated and I'll see you when it gets done. All right, so we got the flow dynamics calibration done. So we'll go ahead and hit the next button and we'll see that it uh, creates this factor K value. And this will actually be sent to the printer and will be an available option for me to select in the future. So we'll want to go ahead and name this ESUN ABS HT. And we'll go ahead and hit finish. And we'll see that the flow dynamics calibration result has been saved to the printer. Um, so this will show up under the little, um, on the X1C under the little edit button on the filament, it'll pop up and you'll see a factor K value in there and you'll see that value in there. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And then you'll see if you hit manage results, you'll see all the ones for the nozzle um, that you've done. So we see before I've done the ESUN high speed, and now we're doing the uh, high temperature and we'll see the different K value there. And if you ever need to change these or wanna clean them out or anything like that, the, that's where these are located as a managed result right there. All right, so now let's do the flow rate calibration and we'll do the auto calibration here as well. And if you don't have the auto calibration, um, that's probably because you have a P1P or a P1S or something that doesn't have the LiDAR on it. Uh, so the X1C has the LiDAR, um, so it's able to do the auto calibration. If you don't have an X1C with um, the LiDAR, you'll probably only see manual calibration here. All right, so once again, we're using ABS, so we'll need um, that higher temperature plate. Um, for this test, you can use the textured um, PEI plate if you want, but we've um, been doing everything on the smooth PEI plate or the high temperature plate. Um, so we'll go ahead and get this calibrated with the flow rate. 
So we'll hit calibrate on there and I'll see you when it gets done. All right, the flow rate calibration is done. So we'll go ahead and hit the next button here and you'll see that it's changed the flow ratio. And now we'll save this to a preset that is actually saved in Bamboo Studio. So let's go ahead and name it eSun ABS High Temp, just like we did before. We'll hit finish. Flow rate calibration result has been saved to preset. We'll hit OK. We can go over here and we'll see that we now have eSun ABS HT. And we'll see that our flow ratio has been added in there. So now that it's been calibrated, let's go ahead and start printing stuff. So the first thing that we'll do is print a Benchy. Um, so let me go ahead and get that loaded. All right, so now that we have the Benchy loaded in here, we'll go ahead and slice the plate. And it looks like it'll take a little over an hour to print. So we'll go ahead and print plate. We don't need to do uh, the flow dynamics calibration because we've already done that and saved that for this printer. Um, we will do the time lapse and we'll go ahead and send that to the printer and I'll see you when it gets done. All right, now that we have the bench sheet done, let's go ahead and print one of our samples. And just like the bench sheet, we'll go ahead and slice the plate. We don't need to <clears throat> do the flow dynamics calibration. Uh, we, so we will save on every print with that, but we will do a time lapse of it. And let's go ahead and send it to the printer. All right, now that we've got the Benchy and the sample printed for the high temperature, let's go ahead and get everything ready for the glass fiber. So you'll see that I've loaded another generic ABS in slot one of the AMS, and you will see I changed it. It looks like the same color in the roll, but I changed it to a slightly different color there so we can <clears throat> tell a little bit of a difference. Um, so let's go ahead and get it calibrated. We'll go ahead and hit the calibration. We'll start with the flow dynamics hit the auto calibration. We are using the high temperature plate with the ABS. So we'll go ahead and hit calibrate on there and I'll see you when it gets done. All right, now that we have the flow dynamics calibration done, we'll go ahead and hit the next button. We'll see that it has a K value and we'll go ahead and name this. And again, this will send that to the printer and then we'll have that as an option to select from manufacturers and everything whenever we're at the printer loading a filament. So now let's go to the flow rate and do the auto calibration for that. And everything is set up. We're doing this will be generic until we finish this test. Smooth PEI plate 0.4. So we'll go ahead and hit calibrate and I'll see you when it gets done. All right, now that it's done with the flow rate calibration, we'll hit the next button and we'll see that it has a flow rate there. And again, we'll go ahead and type in eSun ABS glass fiber. We'll hit finish and this has been saved to the preset. So again, when we go over here, we'll see that the glass fiber is there and the flow rate is there. So let's get a benchy loaded and see what that looks like. All right, and here we are with the benchy loaded. We'll go ahead and slice it. And I'll see you in a little over an hour. All right, and now that the bench is loaded, we'll do our cool little sample and see how that comes out. Uh, so let's go ahead and slice the plate. 
take a little over 20 minutes. We don't need to do the flow dynamics calibration. So I'll see you when it gets done. All right, so the first one that we will look at will be the high temperature. And as you can see, no stringing or anything on those overhangs there. And you know, right between there is where, <clears throat> this is why I print this particular one, is so that I can see if there's any stringing <clears throat> or anything like that. And then I look at the underside right here and see if there's anything there. And everything is very smooth. Uh, no, you know, defects of any kind or anything like that on the sample either. And everything printed really well. And you don't feel ridges or anything like that on the side of the sample. All right, so now let's take a look at the glass fiber. And you'll see no stringing or anything like that. It's not as smooth as a surface everywhere, um, but that's pretty typical of like carbon fiber. So I'm assuming glass fiber would be the same, um, but it did print really, really well. And again, there's no stringing. There's no major defects, errors or anything like that. Same with the sample. Nothing crazy going on with the sample. So my final thoughts on these is I'm super excited to print more stuff with this. The high temperature, this would be really good stuff again to make your uh, spool cover if you're gonna do drying a filament or a spool that needs to um, you know, go in a dryer or something like that. So if you're buying refill of the bamboo uh, filament, <clears throat> this high temperature ABS would be a great filament to print your uh, spools out of. So if you wanted to print a couple of these out of this, I think it'd be a great material to do that. If you need anything that's chemical corrosion, um, resistant, lightweight, high impact, super duper strong, prints fast and it prints really well. It was very easy to calibrate. We didn't have to tinker with it too much. Um, so if you're looking for filament um, that does that then this glass fiber filament is really cool and honestly it's worth picking some of this up just to have it on hand um, and to print with it so you can check out um, how it prints especially you guys out there that are printing with the uh, engineering materials and you gals out there printing with the uh, engineering materials as well this is one that i would uh, take a look at and they do have a couple of different colors of it but i was thoroughly impressed with it and i uh, can't wait to print more with both of these things so i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did smash that like button be sure to hit the subscribe button don't miss um, the next video on the channel and I'll see everybody next week. Thanks everybody. Bye.